Two to three hours? Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's great to be here. I'm John Cranley. Uh, I'm running for mayor. Uh, let me just give you a little background about who I am and how I see the race. And uh, I guess we'll go to questions and answers later. Um, obviously, I love Cincinnati. I've been here my whole life. My wife, Dean, and I are raising our son, Joseph, here because we want Cincinnati to be even greater than the one that we grew up in. And we believe that there are some wonderful things happening. Uh, the revitalization of the banks, the revitalization of Fountain Square, the revitalization of Over the Rhine, Clifton. I just, just today I was driving on McMillan and the U-Square project, Short Vine. There is some really exciting vibrancy in our urban core right now. And I am proud to say that uh, I was part of a bipartisan leadership team that put most of those efforts in place. Um, First, let me back up and say that when I came on council in 2001, or actually December of 2000, we inherited some very serious race issues that had been neglected for a long time. And it exploded in April and we had to deal with a lot of uh, different issues. And I'm proud to say that I was the swing vote to mediate rather than litigate the uh, lawsuits that became known as the collaborative agreement. And it was a 5 4 vote. It's kind of funny in retrospect because at the time uh, it was very controversial. Now everyone brags about it. Um, but I felt that we had to change some things at the city in order to improve the city on a long term basis and be a leader on civil rights. And I'm very proud of that. Now, we didn't solve our race issues, but we have made some significant progress. And I suggest to you that we would not be having drinks at Kaze, the 14th and Vine, today if we had to take on some of those tough issues. Um, and I think it's important to understand how important the collaborative agreement is. In addition, David Pepper and I had, uh, put together a task force chaired by George Schaefer in 2002, which led to the creation of 3CDC. Uh, and I'm proud to say that I, I drafted the uh, tax income and finance districts for downtown and over the Rhine. And all of 3CDC's efforts in the Gateway Quarter and all of the public funding for the public infrastructure of the Banks Project has come from these TIP districts. And it's incredibly important to understand how meaningful that was. Now, it's even more meaningful that the private sector, Macy's, Kroger's, Procter & Gamble, etc., invested hundreds of millions of dollars on top of the city funding, but frankly, the city piece of that was about 20 cents on the dollar. And the only, there was no money sitting around. Uh, it was the tip districts that helped make that happen. In addition, I ran the budget for eight years. We had, our credit rating was sterling, and was always the highest level during my leadership, unlike the downgrade that we recently received. And we did it in a bipartisan way. Now, we had the ability, since we had a majority of Democrats on council, we had a majority, we could have ignored the Republicans, we could have ignored the Charter Rights Act. But I always felt it would be better for the city to, cook, to govern in a bipartisan manner. And for eight years, we balanced the budget, we lowered property taxes, we put more police and fire officers on the street. And I think it was the right model. And I think the model of public-private partnerships with the banks, with 3CPC, and downtown was and is the right model. As good as this progress has been, I think we need to quicken the pace of our progress as we move forward. And I think we have three or four major roadblocks to our future. First is the streetcar, which is $150 million just to go from Great American Mall Park to Finley Market. Probably another quarter billion to go up the hill to Clifton. Amazingly, my opponent in the city wants to build it half-baked. Uh, they shouldn't be building any of it unless they can finish all of it. Um, and then it comes with a four million dollar minimum annual deficit when we already have a structurally unbalanced budget. Secondly, the parking meter privatization deal, I think, is just an absolute case study in bad government all the way around. First, it was foisted upon us in the middle of a budget negotiation. Second of all, it's, the whole concept is bad. You're stealing value from the future, spending it today. 
um, and leaving my son and everybody else to build in the future. You're taking what is currently money that can be used to balance our budget. And remember for months in this debate, the leadership said that the parking meter money could not be used for police and fire and basic services. Repeatedly, our public officials said that that was not true. They had to admit it was true. When I was on council, we had 12 million a year in revenues. Now they have roughly 7 million in revenues. And this deal caps the return from parking meter and tickets at $108 million note plus interest, averages about $3 million a year. That blows an additional $4 million deficit into our budget uh, forever. We already have a budget that isn't balanced. So the streetcar adds $4 million forever, the parking meter deal adds another $4 million deficit forever. And then you've got the other side of this equation that the parking meter deal gives a sweetheart deal to Xerox, that the city's own consultant, and they try to keep this memo quiet, but their own consultant said it was 250% higher than what you would pay normally on the market. They get a sweetheart deal, 10, 10 years guaranteed, and then two rights of renewals for, three, for, for 30 years. I believe that the debt and the fees that are being paid to Xerox are going to require aggressive enforcement that will hurt our neighborhood business districts, will hurt downtown, will hurt all these great restaurants that we've been encouraged to start up in this city and downtown over Ryan and on all of our neighborhoods. So I think it's a huge step uh, backwards. And thirdly, you've got this continual uh, budget pension problem that I think has been ignored. And of course, for the first time ever, our credit downgraded, um, which when I was running the budget didn't happen. So I think that the real issue is, how do we know the difference between uh, good ideas, Riverfront Park, Fountain Square, partnerships with 3CDC, I-71 Martin Luther King Interchange, helping neighborhoods, versus bad ideas, streetcar, nowhere, uh, parking meter privatization, which is basically, fundamentally, it's hawking an, an asset from the city for a short-term political benefit, long-term loss. And of course, not tackling our budget problems. But I believe I have the right experience base to know the difference between good ideas and bad ideas. To, say, to know how to say yes to the right things that move the city forward and to say no to things that will bankrupt us. Why do I think I have these, um, the right wisdom to do this job? I think I have the right balance of experiences <coughs> to move this city forward. I'm proud to say that a lifelong Cincinnati and grew up on the west side, inspired by the Jesuits of St. X to give back and pursue excellence. But as I was working in a soup kitchen and over the right as a kid, went to the Dominican Republic to work with Mount Nourish Children. Probably the best thing besides my wife and son that I've done in my life is create the Ohio Innocence Project, which has exonerated 16 people with the use of DNA evidence, people who were in prison improperly for things they did not do. And the program I started has gotten 16 people out. Two minutes. In addition, I'm proud to say that when I left council, I went into Price Hill, the neighborhood I grew up in, to start a new mixed-use project that has unanimous support of the community council, unanimous support of city council, including my opponent, to create new life to a neighborhood that many people had given up on. In fact, 30 banks turned me down uh, for that deal, and the 30, and most of them told me they were doing me a favor because who would want to invest in that neighborhood? And I believe if we don't bring back the Price Hills and the Westwoods and the Evanstons and the Roselawns and the Avondales and the Kennedy Heights and the College Hills, we can't bring back the city. We can't have a solution that works for some but not for all. And I'm the only candidate that's made something happen in the private sector in one of our great historic neighborhoods. So I've been a leader in the private sector, I've been a leader in the public sector, and I've been a leader in the nonprofit sector. And I think that's the right recipe, a diverse set of experiences that helps give me the judgment to know the difference between a good idea and a bad idea. And I think the judgment to know where to move this city forward is the key issue in this race. I think I'm out of time, and if you don't mind, while Roxanne goes, I'm gonna eat my lunch. Thank you. <laughs>